Hello everyone and welcome to The Chrissy B Show, the UK's only TV program dedicated to mental health and well-being topics. Now would you know what to do if someone, even a loved one, was having a heart attack or choking? Would you be able to keep them alive until professional help arrived? On today's show, we are going to be showing you some basic first aid skills that could make you a modern day hero because you could go on to save a life. Now taking immediate action and applying the right techniques while waiting for professional help can considerably reduce deaths and injuries. And of course, first aid is not a replacement for the emergency services, but it's a vital step that helps to reduce serious injuries and improve the chances of survival. As in the case of a gentleman called Robert McDonald, who was his, actually his mum's hero after she collapsed at a funeral. Now he called 999 and then she started having these seizures and went into respiratory arrest. Now Robert, who was actually first aid trained, he said, um, I started CPR and kept it going for a good five minutes before the ambulance crew arrived. I cannot stress enough the importance of having knowledge of basic first aid to deal with emergencies. It really does save lives. So thankfully he, his mum Eve is actually uh, well today. She made a full recovery and as you can imagine is really proud of her son. So now let me tell you about what we will be covering on today's show. I'll be joined by Mark Dory, Director of Blue Earth Training Limited, who will be telling us how he set up his company and about the different first aid courses out there. Now we'll be getting demos on basic first aid that everyone should know, including checking on breathing, putting someone in the recovery position, CPR for adults, children and babies, what to do when someone is choking and more. So you really can't afford to miss this show. So let's meet Mark and also Kate Nixon from the National Autistic Society, which is the UK's leading charity for autistic people and families, who are one of the first companies Mark taught. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. How welcome. are you both? Yeah, well, yeah. thank you. Good. So I'm so looking forward to today's programme because we are going to be doing the, the practical stuff as well. But I just want to find out about the two of you first of all. So start with you, Mark. That's so it. how did you get into first day, first day training in the first place? Well, in um, 2010, I started my company, Blue Earth Training, because I wanted to make first day training modern, fun and affordable for everyone. Um, I saw a gap in the market and within the industry, uh, I noticed um, there was lack of equipment, uh, mannequins were old, uh, PowerPoint presentations, just pe presentations in general were quite poor and teaching yeah. was so out of date. Um, this is why first aid training, I just wanted to bring it into the future and just bring the fun back into first aid training. Um, it started, I started teaching in my local area um, and then we grew, so now we teach across the UK and as far as field as Brunei, Cyprus, Dubai and even oh. Afghanistan. Uh, we've taught there as well yeah. um, and training is just, just not limited to the classroom um, I've taught in people's homes uh, in garages basements um, anywhere as long as there's a space to train we can tr we can train first aid okay. and all our courses um, we run in a fun and enjoyable manner it's just so we get everyone to interact nobody's put on the spot as well and this is why we've got a 100% pass rate to actually work with our learners um, yeah. and we adapt the training uh, to their needs as well Okay. Now, um, why is it so important for people to actually do a first aid course? Because I know there's loads of people that yeah. they don't even know the basics. So why is it? Obviously, okay, it's to save lives, but there's also other... Yeah, there's so many accidents that happen within the home. Um, stuff like uh, slips, trips and falls, uh, bangs to the head, poisons, even drowning. Um, Statistically speaking, uh, 6,000 people lost their lives last year due to accidents in the homes. Uh, Two million children uh, below the age of 15 were taken to a hospital, you know, suspected injuries. Um, boys are more likely to have accidents than girls. Um, the most dangerous place in your home would be the living room and falls account for a lot of accidents as well. So just having that small amount of first aid knowledge really could change and save somebody's life. And why do you love it so much? What do you personally get out of it? Um, well, when I see people turn up on the course, um, they seem very nervous, worried, um, but when they actually leave, they seem to have a spring in their step, just because um, if there is an emergency situation, they'll be able to go in and hopefully, and will do, save a life. And what's been some of like, the feedback that you, you get from some of your clients? Uh, some of the feedback, um, well, there was a lady last week, um, she came up to me before the course and said she was really, really nervous. So I adapted the course slightly for her. Um, and she actually left and felt empowered because any situation she could then have the confidence, which is the main thing, to go in and help someone. Um, 
a couple of weeks ago, I trained some first aiders for a county show um, and really great people and they actually invited me down to the show. And then when I was there, they actually said the day previously, um, there was an accident in the car park wow. and they rushed down and actually found out she was diabetic. So they managed to get some sugar inside her, I treated her for shock. So that just that little bit of training just gave them that confidence to go in and help. And um, another one last year, in actual fact, I was at a golf club. Um, I was just teaching a normal one day emergency first aid at work course and I noticed on the wall they had a, a defibrillator so I said do you want to go through the training so we adapted it we went through the training as well and a week later they actually had to use it and save somebody's wow. life yeah oh, that's amazing how do you feel when you hear things like that it must it be just, right. it just makes you so um, proud that the training that you give to these people yeah. actually work it really is good and you can't even yeah. imagine how many lives that saved because uh, oh. it's yeah, I mean, the defibrillators themselves, um, you're more likely to um, be saved from using a defibrillator than normal CPR. CPR um, stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. You've got 6% chances of um, survival. All we're doing is just circulating the blood around the body. Yeah. But if you use an AED machine, which stands for automated external defibrillator, your chances then go up to 74% chance of survival. Wow. So it's, these it's things huge, are absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah. and they're made for any, everyone. Yeah. Now, how did you two uh, find out about each other? Because you're, you're from the National Autistic Society, so how did you get to work together? Well, uh, we come across Mark through a different stream, really. We were looking for somebody locally to help us organise a sports event for our uh, autistic teens. So that was uh, a few years ago. And uh, we were looking uh, for somebody to kind of uh, expand the work because we seen Mark working with our teenagers. Mm -hmm. And it was really excellent because he showed a, a quite a good knowledge and understanding of autism because he was able to adjust his communication using visual tools and, and uh, additional things like this. Did you so have specific training for that, Mark, before? Was it just something that you were naturally good no, at? No, it's, it's, it's just something I mean, I've known Kate for years and she yeah. was one of the first companies I actually taught yeah. first aid training to. Uh, and talking and running these courses. Yeah. And I was, actually used to yeah. take the, the autistic teenagers away on residential camps. Oh, that's uh, that's nice. how we so formed that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It was the partnership working because, yeah, you know, Mark nice. works with us, you know, uh, we kind of uh, explained that a bit more. And then when Mark was working, you know, with the, with the teens, he could yeah. kind of uh, put everything in practice. Yeah. So and when we were working, we were looking for uh, kind of piloting something new. So when mm -hmm. we were looking for uh, first aid uh, training for our autistic adults because there was something what they really wanted to do. We couldn't find a provider who would uh, want to do it. So you know, they thought it was too complicated. Uh, it, to it is complicated, it's very yeah. rigid and, and then it's about the understanding of autism. Yeah. And, you know, so we, in National Autistic Society we truly believe that it's uh, you know empowering the people and yeah. you know learning new skill and increasing the confidence. It's through the understanding of autism. So Mark was an excellent candidate because he had that skill said already oh, and he was willing to kind of do all these adjustments so yeah. we kind of started and what were working. the results like that, that you saw oh the results were really excellent we, we worked uh, and we ran a pilot scheme yeah. uh, and yeah. it, it worked it, it took a little bit of a time and uh, we had to do a lot of adjustments so yeah. uh, it did work That's yeah excellent. and running this course it was the first course ever to be run in the uk um, so we adapted wow. all the training yes, we did. Uh, and we worked with Kate um, and these um, adults, uh, autistic adults, you know, it was fantastic. All of them passed um, yeah. and I was so proud because I got invited back to actually hand their certificates out on the awards night. So, yeah. it, it, you know, that's a sense of achievement anyway for me. Oh, so it was that's good. excellent. It was just so yeah. nice that there was someone actually that was willing to do that because imagine. Yeah. They, they need that as well. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, kind of the main thing what, what we do in our uh, centre in Linden House, uh, we are kind of trying to adjust uh, the timetable to individual needs, but the kind of the main skill what we are trying to do is to help them to find employment. Yeah. And it's not only about teaching the social skills, we want to do something practical, but yeah. the, it's the same training course what the staff are doing as well. So uh, the, sta the staff knows what they are doing, so we can support them in a way, but we need the training and the companies to do exactly the same yeah. thing so with Mark's understanding of autism and understanding the individual needs and being able to provide the autism specific training and being mm. able to put all the adjustments in place so it actually really worked so uh, we were split yeah. into six hour training session which is a basic very rigid training session yeah. we ran it in a six hour six time one hour slots and then we had additional individuals supported individually mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So for example, we've got one gentleman, uh, he is very sensitive to different smells uh -huh. and it affects his, li uh, his daily life. So, um, you know, when you see all these uh, anise and they are very clean with antiseptic wipes, they have very, mm -hmm. very strong smells. Uh, even the Risa's anise is made from rubber, so it's, it's a very strong and distinctive smell. So, uh, you know, he was very apprehensive to do oh. it and we were really worried that, yeah. you know, he won't be able to do this. And it was one of the people who would like to have a job in the future, so we wanted to support him to do that. Yeah. So when Mark was working with this particular person, he kind of he led them to have this time to smell everything, oh. touch everything. <laughs> oh, and there's nice. that, that something what you wouldn't be able to do in a normal first yeah. day training. Yeah. And yeah. then Mark left some of his equipment behind. And again, there's something what normal uh, first day provider wouldn't be able to do because they're very expensive. Yeah. So the, the people mm -hmm. we work with, they had the time to kind of uh, look through it, touch everything. Wow, that's so time. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was good. <laughs> but again, so, it's just working yeah. with yourself. Yeah. and just understanding yeah. the needs and then so, you can you know you can then yeah. give those courses to everyone yeah. wow yeah. that's amazing that's yeah lovely. they all passed they had to do the same exam it's yeah. a practical exam and a written exam at the end they all passed they must have felt so good about they were very yeah. they, they were absolutely elated they were ecstatic about this and we have got actually three out of the ten actually have got part-time jobs now oh, that's amazing that uh, oh, increased wow, their well confidence done. that's excellent yeah. news well, yeah <laughs> All right, guys, we've got about a minute to the break. I just wanted to find out as well, Mark, um, from you, because obviously there's lots of different like first aid courses. How yeah. do you go about choosing the right one? Well, first of all, you could contact us ourselves, and then mm -hmm. we can have a chat. It's either by phone or by email, or look on our website as well. But depending whether you're at home, uh, whether you just need training in the home, so whether it's just a little bit of paediatric knowledge, yeah. or whether you're a company, it all comes down to a first aid needs assessment. On that assessment, will then relate to how many first aiders mm -hmm. you need in the workplace uh, and how much first aid kit you need. But mm -hmm. uh, we run various types of training from one day courses um, mm -hmm. it could be uh, defibrillator courses it could be pediatric courses it could be even uh, a five-day course which we actually run for our close protection companies okay that's a lot of the hardcore <laughs> yeah, the, yeah that is slightly different yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah okay yeah. so mark i'm going to keep you with with me because okay. we are going to get into the practical yeah. stuff kate thank you so much for coming and talking about the, the work that you've been doing with mark and everything that brilliant what you're doing with the with autistic mm. families is all well. wonderful thank you for having thank me you so yeah. much thank you all right guys so after the break we'll briefly be speaking about the different types of first aid kits on the market and getting into the practical stuff such as turning someone over from their front to their backs and checking to see if they are breathing and placing some Someone in the recovery position. Welcome back to today's program everyone where we are speaking about the basic first aid that everyone should know. So I'm here again with Mark. So Mark, we're going to get into the practical stuff very yeah. shortly, okay. but we've got all these first aid kits and I have to say it's quite confusing. I didn't realise there were so many of them. Yeah, and these are only a few at the moment. Oh, really? Yeah, there's, there's so many out on the market and there's for instance, snowboarding. We've got a snowboarding first aid kit, uh, predominantly looking at, um, there's even sun cream in here. Uh, because you get the reflection from the snow, yeah, okay. so that's one for going on holiday. Um, normal first aid kits in a home, something like this. Okay. But it doesn't matter what you've got, as long as you've got something generally plastics. Um, yeah. Small children, uh, we've got the baby first never, aid kits. I never saw these before, they're yeah. so cute. Um, if you open what do we have up, in here? Okay. So inside, um, we've got the normal eye wash. Um, so if there okay. is any injuries to the eye or dust in the eye, what we do is the injured side down and then you just flush it out with water. Okay. So that's the eye. Um, then you've got some burn shields. So if the child does burn their hand, we've got something to put on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, if they've been really good kids, um, they little get a badges. little sticker as oh, well, so which cute. is really good. And plasters as well. Um, and with the children, if you can make it fun, um, they don't mind. Yeah. I quite like those plasters for me. Yeah. Oh, they the are flowers good. and stuff are so cute. Okay. So, how do you go about choosing? Obviously, some of them they're like, if you are an adventurer or a snowboarder, yeah. you know which ones. But is yeah. that, would you say as long as you've got this one and maybe the baby one is, is sufficient? It, it all depends uh, yeah. really on what your needs and what you're actually doing. As long as you've got something in the household. Yeah. And remember, most cars have got first aid kits in as well, so you can yeah. use that as well. Um, I recently went to Gambia and I took uh, this one, which is the solo traveller. Oh, okay. um, so it's got in there needles, etc. Just in case I did need an operation, yeah. I've got my own. <laughs> Yeah, just in case. <laughs> operation yeah. on yourself. And you've got some strange ones as well, like um, the dental first aid kit. Yeah, what's, now, what's that? 
my uh, future father-in-law, um, not all of his teeth are his own, so um, he always takes one of these away on holiday just in case one of them pops out. Uh, there's some cement in there, we can actually pop it back in. Okay, <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> yeah. So Mark, I've only really seen this this one, the basic one in yeah. like n normal chemists and, and pharmacies. Where would you get all the other stuff from? Are they readily available anywhere? Yeah, yeah. online. And it all depends on what you're actually doing. Um, you go online, tap whatever you want to do, and they'll come up with first aid kits. Okay, yeah. and they're all good? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. All right. So Mark, now we're going to start the practical stuff, everyone. So yeah. we'll see you just after this. So Mark, we have our casualty with the lovely pink nail polish, I have to say. And now you're going to show us the um, how to put the person into recovery position, check the breathing and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, so we, yeah. Um, so first of all, what we need to do is check for danger because we're number one priority. Never ever put yourself in danger. Then it's to the casualty, then to the bystanders. As you can see, there's no danger whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to do is kneel down by the side of the casualty, raise the arm up, bring the other one down to the side, roll her to halfway. Yeah. Then I place my hand underneath her head to okay. stop it falling onto the floor, roll her onto her back, and then I can check for breathing. Okay. If so she is, yeah, sorry, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, if she is breathing, then we can place her into the recovery position. Okay, so I'll let you show us first. Yeah, I'll just okay. get out of the way for you yeah. to do that, and then... So we need down by the casualty. Um, the arm nearest you um, comes directly up. Um, you always make sure the casualty's head is facing away from you. If it's facing towards you, when you do roll the person, what's going to happen is it's going to roll onto their face. Then we bring this arm down to the side of the body, like so. One hand on the shoulder, one hand on the wrist, and then you roll them halfway. When they get to that position there, they're actually resting on your thighs. You can remove your hand to the back of the head, and then you can just roll them back down. From there, you bring the arm down. And then what we have to do is conduct a head tilt and chin lift. And it's the best way of opening up the airway. So make sure it's all clear. Hand on the forehead, one on the chin, and tilt the head back. We check breathing for 10 seconds. Now the casualty is breathing, we can then place them into the recovery position. Now the recovery position is the best position to actually keep the airways open. So what I'm going to do is the arm nearest you comes up and just place it to the side there. Then we bring the heel into the backside as far as possible. Regardless of the size of the person, you'll be able to turn them over with just two fingers. Um, if they are wearing any watches or rings, with rings we turn inwards. Watches we just take off and place at the side making sure there's nothing in the pockets before we turn them, hand on the top, and they just roll towards you like so. From there, we've just got to move the leg up so the casualty doesn't roll on their stomach. Now this is a problem in car accidents. When people have an accident, normally they fall forward and it blocks the airway. Uh, and people being sick as well, choke on their own tongue or even vomit. So that's up so they're not sick. If they are, we've got to make sure the head is tilted back the airway is open, and then we check breathing back of the hand for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, we actually can leave this casualty in this position for up to 30 minutes. Now, if it was a heavily pregnant lady, what we would have to do is turn her onto her left hand side. And the reason why is you've got the infina vena cava, so the blood going back into the heart on the right hand side. If you did turn her onto the right hand side, the baby could slip across and block the blood flow going back into the heart. Mm -hmm. So a heavy pregnant lady, always onto the left hand side. Okay, Mark, so I'm gonna give it a go now. Yeah. You can talk me through it. Okay. So guys at home, if you have anyone with you there, you can also practice as we, as we do this. It's good for you to learn as well. Okay. Now, if it was somebody in the street, even before um, you actually go in, you must always ask somebody's consent. Okay. Um, to actually then try first aid or give them first aid. So in this position, she is unconscious. So what we can do is uh, the nearest arm towards you, if we can put it straight up, that's it, because it's up and out the way. Yeah. Now at that point, you can see we can roll her nice and easily onto towards you. Now you always roll a casualty towards you. So in this position, we roll them towards you. Okay. We recovery position, we roll them towards you. The only time you roll somebody away is if they've been sick. Okay because you don't want to be yeah, in yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so the arm furthest away, mm -hmm. uh, what we need to do is just bring it down to the side. Okay. That's it. And then we place one hand onto the shoulder, and then we're going to place this hand onto the wrist and bring it into the side. So this hand onto the shoulder okay. just here. 
and then one hand onto her wrist just here. Mm -hmm. And then we just roll her towards you. Just That's to here, you said, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just mm -hmm. about to that position. We call that the 12 o'clock position, because mm -hmm. at that position, it's on a pivot. So what you can do now is just, if you can take your hand off the shoulder, place it behind the casualty's head, because if they're unconscious at that point, if you don't, it's just going to fall onto the floor. So yeah. we're protecting the head, okay. and then just roll her towards you. Okay. And then the very last thing we need to do oh. is actually bring the arm down to the side of the body. That's it. Okay. And do I tilt the head? Yeah, so now we're in this position. What we can do is actually an airway check. So an airway okay. check is when you place your hand on the forehead mm -hmm. and then one hand underneath the chin and you tilt the head back. And this opens up the airway just here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that point, keep your hand there. And then what we need to do is put your ear down to the casualty, keeping your hand underneath the chin because we can actually lift up the chin. And then your ear needs to be as close to the casualty, though if they did poke out your tongue, it needs to go into your ear. Right, okay. Because you've got other factors like yeah. wind yeah. Uh, when you're outside. So okay. we keep down there for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and after 10 seconds, we know that our casualty is breathing, so we can then place them into the recovery position, okay. which we'll go through now. So I need to go that side? Yeah, if you can okay. go that side. Right. And we always walk around the casualty. Okay. Never jump over the casualty. <laughs> okay. So, the arm nearest you, we just need to put out to the side like so. Okay. That's it. Now, depending on what you want to do first, you either can move the hand and place it to the cheek, or this leg we bring up and remember the heel to the backside as far as possible. Okay, so I'll have to do this one first because it's yeah. closer. And again, rem uh, remembering that if we take off any rings, we move around yeah. so it doesn't scratch the face, watch as we take off. Okay. But if we turn the hand the opposite way around, that's oh, it. Okay. And then we keep our hand there. Right. This hand we can either she's, use the trousers. Tall. She's got long legs, can't reach. That's okay. it. And then bring their heel up to the backside as far as possible. Mm -hmm. And then we just roll them towards you. That's it, okay. nice and gently. Good. And then we work from the uh, bottom end. So this leg comes up and we move it up so she doesn't fall onto her stomach. So just bring the knee up slightly. That's it. Okay. Then we just make sure she's fully over. Yep. Yeah. And then the very last thing, we have to check for breathing. So just tilt their head back slightly to open up the airway, just in case she is sick. And then it's the back of the hand, because it's really sensitive. Just place it down by their nose and just check for 10 seconds. So it's just the back of the hand, your hand. Oh, That's okay. it. Nice and close, because you can actually feel the breath. Yeah. Oh, she's breathing. Fantastic. Yeah, so we can leave her there again for half an okay. hour. <laughs> right, Mark, so after the break, we're going to be going into some other things. Can you, can you, because obviously this, this casualty is breathing, but if they're not breathing, then it's a whole other kettle of fish, isn't it? Yeah, and then we have to go through uh, CPR, yeah. the procedures for CPR. So we go through adult, uh, child, and then we go through baby CPR. Brilliant. Okay, so guys, don't go away. CB and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. back to our show on the basic first aid everyone should know about. Now I just want to say that this isn't a replacement by the way for actually going on a course. You should really get on a course yourselves but this is just to give you some basic stuff that everybody should should uh, know and just in yeah. case you need to use it on a loved one, a friend or a complete stranger you know what to do. So yeah. now it's CPR. CPR yeah, yeah adult CPR. Now we've got adult child and baby now the way to work out the age of an adult child and baby because the CPR is slightly different mm -hmm. is an adult we class somebody with puberty so mm -hmm. just have a look at the general size of the person now a child we class as puberty down to one and a baby from okay. one to zero so this is our adult casualty now what we have to do same as we were doing last time was actually check to see whether their casualty is breathing so we call it Dr. ABC, so mm -hmm. check for any dangers to yourself, your number one priority. Yeah. Then we have to check for response. Now for an adult, we just gently place our hands on the shoulders and shake and say, are you all right? Are you all right? Mm -hmm. So that's the response. Okay. If there's no response, then we go for an airway check. 
So hand again gets placed onto the forehead like so. We tilt it back, two fingers, and then we check breathing for 10 seconds. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay. Now at that point, I know the casualty is not breathing. So what I would say is, Chrissy, can you phone 999? Mm -hmm. I have a non-breathing adult casualty. Can you make sure you bring back a defibrillator if one's available nearby? Okay. Right. But make sure you come back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it here. Okay. <laughs> um, so the next thing we do is um, we just make sure the airway is open. So mm -hmm. loosen any shirts, ties, undo big jackets. And then what we have to do is place the heel of the hand in the centre of the sternum. Okay. Now the easiest way to find it is if you draw a line from the top of your armpit directly across, that is the centre of your sternum. Okay. And that's where you need to be placing the heel of the hand, because it's a solid bit of bone. The top of my yeah. sternum's here, the bottom's just here, hand right in the centre. Okay. And when you push down, you're actually pushing down five to six centimetres, two inches or the height of a credit card. So if you fill okay. your sternum now, there's not much flesh there whatsoever. No, no it's so, quite painful. <laughs> yeah. So what you'll find yeah. is, um, because your chest is in that oval cavity, mm -hmm. when you do push, you'll find it quite spongy. Okay. So it's 30 chest compressions, and then we have to do two rescue breaths. 30? 30. 30. Wow, okay. Yeah, because what we're actually trying to do is just pump the blood around the body. Mm -hmm. uh, because within the first uh, three to four minutes of the heart stopping, the brain cells are start to die off. So we need to circulate that blood. Mm -hmm. um, and by doing mouth to mouth, we can oxygenate the blood and try, try and preserve that life that little bit longer. Okay. Now, earlier I told you to phone 999 because yeah. we've got a non-breathing casualty. By saying non-breathing casualty, that will alert the emergency services and they should be here within eight minutes. Right, okay. So it's really important what you tell them. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And um, if you said no when I said, can you phone 999, because it does happen. Um, I'll go to the next person that will be watching. Can you phone 999? If they say no, then you have to phone yourself. Okay. And most people have got their mobile phones, yeah, so yeah. 999, put it on speaker. So back to 30 chest compressions. Mm -hmm. Heel of the hand in the centre of the sternum, interlock the fingers, and as long as your shoulders are over your hand, mm -hmm. then you're just using your body weight to rock down. So 30 chest compressions. So 30 chest and two rescue breaths. Mm. So hand, pinch the nose, head back, and then what we have to do is make a seal all the way around their mouth. Okay. And you blow in until you see the chest rise. It roughly mm -hmm. take about a second. So head back. <laughs> and then straight back to 30 okay. chest compressions. Now we keep going until the casualty wakes up. Mm -hmm. uh, the emergency services arrive and tell you when to stop. You're physically exhausted or you come back and then what we do is we take it in turns. Maybe right. every one to two minutes we keep changing over. Okay, all right, cool. So let me do the, I'll do the chest compression. I can't yeah. do the mouth to mouth because I'll, I'll get lips to pull over the dummy. But of course, if it's a real casualty, then that won't <laughs> be a problem. Okay. So we're, what we do is we start from the very top. All right, so. Uh, so I'll talk you through it again. Okay. Um, Can you call 999, please, first? No, not yet, because you know, <laughs> we don't know whether they're breathing or not. <laughs> so, uh, what we do is um, check for danger, so okay. have a look for any other signs of danger. Okay. No danger. I was at a school once and there was a lady, um, she used to check for danger like this. Okay. Yeah, there's no need, to, there's no danger. <laughs> Just uh, no oncoming traffic or anything, you're talking about things yeah, like that? Or? Yeah. Then, oh. you, then you list the helper bystanders okay. to maybe guide the traffic. Okay. Um, then we have to check for a response. So remember, gently shake the shoulders and ask if you're all right. Are you okay? Are you all right? So no response. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to do an airway check. So remember, hand on the forehead, tilt it back because we open up that airway. Mm -hmm. And then keep the head back and then listen for 10 seconds. That's it. So get your no. ear all the way down. That's it. Not breathing. Mm -hmm. Now would you like me to go and phone 999? Yes, 999? please, and ask for a defibrillator. Yeah, and I will come back. If there's so, one in the local area somewhere. Yeah, exactly, right. yeah. And then what I need you to do is place your hand in the centre of the stone. Should I take my ring off when I do these? No, 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 it's not. no. Okay. Where is it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And interlock the hands, lock out, and then push down. I won't do 30, but I'll just like, it's, pretend it's 30. And that was 30. And then two And then you breaths. do two rescue breaths. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to give rescue breaths. 
Okay. Um, if the casualty um, had deformity to the face, maybe down to the nature of the injury, okay. um, if they'd just been sick, um, or um, if there's blood all over their face, then you wouldn't do mouth to mouth. Then all you have to do is just keep going. After 30, you just keep going. Oh, okay. And it's going to get very, That's very tiring. That's really tiring. good to know, actually, because you sort of think you, you have to do it. No, right? no, you don't have to. No, your certain situations, like we mentioned, you don't have to. All you do is just chest compressions. Okay. All right, so that's the adult. So if you, can you show us the child one as yeah, well? Yeah, of now? course, yeah. Where's our child? Okay, let's get our child here. Now, remember, the, uh, the age of a child is from one up to puberty. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're ever in a dilemma, is it a child, is it an adult, always go They're for the one up. higher. Okay. Is it a baby, is it a child, always go for the one higher. Uh -huh. So same thing again. We come in, we check for danger, no signs of danger. Check for response, same again. Mm -hmm. Gently shake the shoulders. Are you all right? Are you all right? Airway check, hand on the forehead. Tilt it back to open up the airway. Two fingers and then check breathing for 10 seconds. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Chrissy, can you phone 999? I have a non-breathing child. Can you make sure you come back with a defibrillator if one mm. is available? Okay. Yep, yep good. I'm yeah, right. good. <laughs> <laughs> but this time you have to give five initial rescue breaths. Now, the reason why is generally for an adult, it's something to do with the heart. So there's oxygenated blood within their body. Whereas with a child and a baby, um, it's maybe down to a blockage, maybe like anaphylaxis. Yeah. Uh, it could be asthma or just not, eat, not chewing their food enough. Mm -hmm. So um, five initial rescue breaths, pinch the nose, head back and then inflate. And then we go back to our 30 to okay. two. Now this time when we do 30 chest compressions is one hand. Oh, okay, so it's not as much pressure. Then. Not as much pressure and the mm. depth as well. Um, child's chest is that much, you only go down a third. So it's a third of the chest. Heel or the hand in the center and then off you go. Okay. So it's so good to know, isn't it? back to two rescue breaths. Mm. So two now, so five, then 30, then two. 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 And okay. then carry on 32, okay. 32. Oh. Now, when you give inflations, if the first one doesn't go in, don't worry about it. If the next one doesn't go in, you maybe start to think, think um, have I made a tight seal around the mouth? Did I pinch the nose? Was the head all the way back? Because if it's in the neutral position like this at the moment, mm -hmm. no air's gonna go in. Okay, so, so we've got to keep sure. that airway open. So you'll know because you'll see the chest lifting, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You use your peripheral vision. Once you've blown in, turn your head and you actually see it rise and fall. Okay. So Mark, I'm going to bring the baby in now okay. so for you to show us. Okay, so our little baby. So um, depending on the location of where our casualty is. Now, if they're on the bed, um, if we're doing chest compressions, all we're actually doing is pushing into the mattress. Um, okay. So it's not effective. Um, but if you can't get the person off the bed, maybe down to the size or for some other reason, then you're going to have to do it on there. But okay. for a baby, we're looking at the cot. Mm. So we have to take it, off, take it out of the cot and it needs yeah. to be on a hard surface. So we can do it on the floor, but you can do it on the table if you wish. Okay. Um, what we've got to look out for is the soft patch just here, the fontanella. So mm -hmm. don't touch that. Um, so same again. We come in and we check for danger. Danger being the cot, remove it from the cot. Um, then we have to check for response. Now, you don't shake babies. Okay. <laughs> um, no. So, no. so what we have to do is just clap over the face. That initial shock should wake them up. Or if they haven't got any um, shoes on, we can tickle their feet. Okay. It's that initial shock. Then an airway check. Now, with the baby, if you tilt the head all the way back, the baby's throat acts as a straw. So it will just kink. Oh, so gosh. all we do, hand on the temples and just tilt it back slightly. Mm. One finger underneath, and same again, check for 10 seconds. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, Chrissy, can you phone 999 and have a non-breathing baby? Make sure you come back. Okay. So you don't put a defibrillator on a baby. It's only for the adult right, and child. Okay. This time when we blow in, they say it's blowing out a candle. So that's how much air you need to do. So it's Okay. And we cover the mouth and nose. Okay. Any harder than that, what you could do is blow holes in its lungs. Oh gosh. So that sounds so scary. 
But no, you're doing something. <laughs> something is better than nothing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you, in real life, you're not going to remember everything. But yeah. as long as you're doing something, that's okay. the main. Mm -hmm. So hand just here, tilt the head back slightly, cover the mouth and nose, and then just blow in five times. Yes, it's so gentle now, isn't it? Yeah. Four, five. Five. Then what we have to do, hold the head, mm -hmm. two fingers, same again, centre of the sternum, and you're pushing down one third. Okay. 30 times. 30, okay. After that, we can then come back and give two rescue breaths. And then 30 to 2, 30 to 2. Okay. Now, Mark, just a question, because I, I remember doing a first aid course years ago, yeah. and we would have to, we were told that we had to sort of stick our finger in the mouth and see if there was any obstruction and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, all our guidelines are actually set from the European Research Council. Mm. Um, and every five years after all their research, they change. And, they ch and it changed in October 2015. Okay. Um, we don't put anything in anyone's mouth because we've got so many germs and diseases on our hands, especially yeah. your babies. Because of your fingernails, you could um, nick one a bit, a bit of the gum. So okay. nothing. And it took far too long as well. Okay, so it's better just to get down to it and just like yeah. do what you yeah. can. Okay, then. Because we're really interested in the heart, not what's yeah. in its mouth. Yeah. Yeah, if the heart's okay. not working, baby's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so what we're going to look at is also um, some barrier devices. Mm -hmm. So I just, if you want to take the baby. So back to our adult casualty. Now there's various barrier devices on the market. Um, this is one we always give to our courses. Mm -hmm. So you just tear it open and this is for if a casualty's been sick or there's deformity, okay. etc. So we open it up. There is a right and a wrong way to place this on. So as long as you All right, and this is can read the writing, yeah. Yeah. that's uh, the right way. And okay. then place it on the casualty's face like so, pinch the nose, head oh, back, and okay. then blow in. Yeah. So that's that one like time. That's a much better option. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, so that's our rebreather. Or what we've got is a pocket mask. Mm -hmm. So with this one, you get your gloves, you always wear gloves when conducting any sort of first aid training for the purposes of today, I haven't got them on. Um, you take it out, there's a filter device just in there, and this is a one-way valve. Okay. That gets placed onto the valve like so, and then we can just push it out. Okay. So that's yeah. what it looks yeah. like. It goes onto the casualty's face like so, and then what we have to do is make a diamond, because we're trying to make a seal all the way around mm -hmm. the face. So we squeeze down, head back, and then we can blow into our casualty. and raise the chest. Yeah, okay. Now we can use this for an adult and a mm -hmm. child this way, you can see the arrow with nose. Yeah. For a baby, we tilt it round that oh. way because the face is more pointed. Yeah, okay. So that's our barrier devices. Cool. This is so good to know, Mark. All right, but we're going to have more after the break. Can you yeah. tell the viewers what we'll be doing? Uh, we're going through some bandaging mm -hmm. um, and anything else you'd like to cover. How about choking? I really want to we're, know about that. We'll definitely go through All choking, right, okay, yeah. yeah. I want to know about choking because that's quite common to see yes, people. Yeah. All right, guys, so join us after this. Welcome back to today's programme, everyone, about the basic first aid skills that everyone should know. And now, Mark, we're going to be covering Choking. Choking. Adult choking. With our lovely casualty here. Yes, yeah. So um, with adult casualties, um, we've got two types. You've got mild and you've got severe choking. So with mild choking, what we'll, all we do is just encourage them to cough. So keep coughing, keep coughing. So if they're talking to you, we call that mild choking. Mm -hmm. um, if it's severe, they won't be able to cough. Maybe the hands around the neck, the face, um, the colour of the face will change as well. Okay. So what we then have to do is give five initial back blows. So what we're using is the heat of our hand and we're actually hitting this in between the shoulder blades. Okay, so just explain why we've got this on first of all. Yeah, yeah. this is actually a training vest, a choking okay. vest. So we can actually simulate going through five back blows and then five abdominals. So you Is shouldn't it? practice this at home without, because no. <laughs> you need one of those if you Yeah, can, you need one of these. Because it can it, cause injury. Yeah, internal yeah. injury. Yeah. And if I did it onto you, if I did it for you now, um, yeah. I advise you to go and seek medical help because I don't know, like I say, internally. Okay, all right, so let's see the demo then. What okay, we'll so um, I encourage them to cough. Keep coughing, keep coughing, <coughs> hasn't come out. Um, so what I then do is my arm goes across the chest area, mm -hmm. I lean my casualty forwards, and what I'm doing is the heel of the hand in between the shoulder blades, giving up to five blows. Each time I give a blow, yeah. I check to make sure it hasn't come out. Okay. 
So that's quite a hard whack. It has to be, yeah. yeah. Sorry for our casualty. <laughs> so now what we have to do is an abdominal thrust. So mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're placing the fist just above the belly button, hand on top, and we're forcing in and up. In and up. I, yeah. Okay. So we find the belly button, which is the white bit okay. on our choking vest. Fist just above, hand on top, and then we force in and up. And out it comes. Oh, okay. But what we must do is lean against the casualty so they take all of the force. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. So. Shall I try it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's give it a go. And then I'll talk you through it if you like. Okay. So remember, we've got initial um, mild choking, so we encourage them to cough. cough. Okay. It hasn't come out. So the arm goes across the chest area, mm -hmm. but we lean, lean them down. forward. Okay. So a bit more forwards, a bit more, that's it. And remember, heel so of the sorry, hand. What am I about to do? Sorry, heel <laughs> of the hand in between the shoulder blades. So here. Okay. Yep. Five, you said. Five, yeah. Up to five. <laughs> but remember, keep checking because it may come okay. out on the first one. That's it. Okay, no, not come out. Not come out. So if we so. get behind our casualty, <clears throat> arms underneath theirs, fist just above the belly button, hand on top. I can't reach. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's it. Okay. Yep. So in and out, this said. Yeah, so make a fist, hand on top, make a fist. Oh, That's right. it, and then okay. short and sharp. <laughs> Bingo. Did it that come was out? It. Yeah, it came out on the first one. Yay, yeah, I've saved your life. <laughs> but you did mention your arms couldn't get round. Yeah. And, you know, uh, people often ask, what do you do if somebody's pregnant? Yes. Because you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. So all we do is we go behind our casualty, um, and instead of the hand here, we then move it up to, do you know where we're doing our chest compressions? In the centre of the sternum. Okay. And that's what and we we'll do. do it. There. Yeah, five chest thrusts. Okay. And good. then you repeat five back blows, five chest thrusts, or five back blows, five abdominals okay. until it dislodges or the casualty collapses on the floor. And then we go through danger response airways yeah, and breathing. All the rest of it. Yeah. What if it's a child? Um, child is exactly the same. What we okay. can do is sit down and we can actually lay them over our legs and give five back blows. Mm -hmm. And the same again, kneel down and five abdominals. But for a baby, it's slightly different. All right, so should we see how to do yeah. a baby? Yeah? yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so, this is our baby. Again, what we have to do is um, backside higher than the head because we're mm -hmm. using gravity. Our hand just underneath the chin and open it slightly. This time, heel of the hand, same again, in between the shoulder blades, giving up to five blows, blows, checking each time. One, two, three, four, five, hasn't come out. Mm -hmm. We turn the baby over, and two fingers running down the sternum, and it's five chest thrusts. Okay. One, two. So quite forceful again there. Yeah, quite mm -hmm. forceful and it's come out on the third. Remember, okay. we don't put anything in the mouth, so all we do is turn it to one side until it drops out. Okay. Now, at this point, we have to place the baby in the recovery position, oh. which is slightly different okay. to what we are doing earlier for the adult and child. Mm -hmm. So this position is like this. Okay. So backside higher than the head. We tilt the head back slightly to open up the airway, and then we're constantly looking at the face to see any change okay. of colour. Um, if, if it doesn't come out, um, straight away, like, would you just carry on doing the slapping? And yeah, the... and then we just keep turning. Okay. Yeah, right. five back blows, five abdominals. And should you just always go to the hospital as well after this Definitely. has happened? Always, yeah. Definitely. Okay. Now, one of the questions that people always ask me is, what is the difference between a chest compression mm -hmm. and a chest thrust for a baby? Well, chest compressions, first of all, is in the neutral position, mm -hmm. and it's like this. Yeah. And a chest thrust, backside high in the head, is more vigorous. One. Okay. Two. Yeah. That's the difference. Okay. So bandaging now. Yeah, bandaging. Um, in any first aid kit, you always find some sort of bandage and maybe a triangular bandage. Mm -hmm. um, before dressing any wounds, if there is blood, we always make sure we put our protective uh, gloves on, okay. uh, non-latex, because people are allergic to latex. Now, mm -hmm. uh, what we have to do is, first of all, sit you down or lay you down, uh, just in case you lose too much blood. Okay. Um, then we have to examine, then we have to apply pressure. So today, what we've got, if you turn your hand over, you've just got a cut directly across there. So mm -hmm. all I'm going to get you to do is just close your hand. And the reason why, if you've got a cut across there, if you close your hand, you're closing the wound, okay. whilst I get the dressing out. So if you can imagine, I've got my gloves on. Open the dressing. Mm -hmm. And then when we roll it out, there's always a, a short end 
then we go to the pad and then okay. it's the long end. So if you can open your hand again for me now and now close your hand nice and tight. So the idea of this bandage now is when I bandage it up you shouldn't be able to open your hand okay. and that's applying pressure. So if you can keep your hand closed for me and then we always try and keep the full thickness of the bandage as well. Okay. What we are going to do is um, just leave your thumb out and I'll explain that in a minute. So you don't need to put any creams or anything like no that just creams, straight to no. the bandage? Because uh, you won't find any creams in the first aid kit. Oh, okay. Because I don't know whether you're allergic to yeah, sorts okay. of creams. So you would never ever find any creams, tablets uh, in a first aid kit. Okay. Even with tablets, if, uh, if I gave you a paracetamol, I'm not actually a doctor, so I can't prescribe any. You are prescribing medication. Actually, speaking of, sorry to change the subject, speaking yeah. of paracetamol, someone having a heart attack, or is it, I can't remember, because I just see this image on films and they always say, I'll oh, give the person aspirin or paracetamol when they're having a heart attack. Is that like a myth? Or no, you can. Um, first of all, what I would do is ask, are you allergic to aspirin? And is yeah. aspirin. Um, and with a heart attack, what I would do is get you to sit down against the wall and we call it the W position. Mm. Uh, w position, if I'm leaning against the wall, it, the wall is here, it comes down to my bum. Uh -huh. up to my knees, down to my ankles, to okay. my toes, W position or half sitting. Um, and it's 300 mils of aspirin. Okay. And what I get you to do is just chew it nice and slowly and it does the same sort of thing as the medication, okay. uh, which is the warfarin. Sorry guys, just wanted to <laughs> just ask that while it was in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, all we do after that is then we can just tie it off. No safety pins. No need for a safety pin just to keep it in place. Tie it off. Oh, that is tight. <laughs> Yeah, that's very secure, that is. I can feel that. But um, why we've left the thumb out is something called capillary refill. Mm -hmm. Now, what I would do, because you've got nail varnish on, um, is I'll press your skin this side. It turn white when I release. Mm -hmm. It then turn back to a pinky colour, and that means I know there's circulation in the hand. Okay. Um, again, you can Let's do it check. on the finger now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. And also, um, the thumb is out because we know it's a good bandage. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> really good, guys. All right. <laughs> Okay. So we just take that one off yeah. uh, and we go for another one. It's another type of bandaging now. Yeah, we, we keep it very simple. Uh, keep it simple safe, that's what we always say. Mm -hmm. So let's just say we've got a cut to the arm. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something here, fine, we can see it's bare skin. Now if I had a cut to my shoulder, just up here, just up, um, what you will have to do is ask my permission. First of all, have we got consent to give first aid? I say yes, but then you're going to have to cut my shirt. You're going to have mm. to expose the wound so we can actually put the pad on. So if I put a pad over your clothing, it's just going to push the dirt um, yeah. into, your, into the wound. So okay. um, it's just a cut to your arm there. Um, all we have to do, again, just unravel it to the pad. Remember, that's a sterile patch, so we don't mm. need to touch that. And then what I'll get you to do is apply pressure. So if you can use your other hand to apply pressure. And then exactly the same, use the short end at the very end, and then I can dress the wound. Okay. So as I go over, we try and keep the bandage as thick as possible. So keeping it as thick as possible mm -hmm. and we're applying pressure. And what we can also do straight after this is um, I will elevate it just to make it that little bit more comfortable. Okay. And when we place the bandage on, what I'm looking at is trying to go over that pad so no mm -hmm. infection can get oh, underneath. Okay. So as you Make see, sure I've you gone over there. Well. How does it feel? Good. Yeah. Feels firm, nice and tight, but not restrictive <laughs> to... I don't feel like my arms yeah, are going to drop no, anyway. it feels fantastic, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, we're saving lives. Yes, we're yeah. saving lives, true. And then we can just tie it off. Like so. Now, to make it quite comfortable, what I'm mm. going to do is, um, again, what you'll find is a triangle bandage. Um, I can just open it up and then just put it into a supportive sling. Okay. Now, I've been on many first aid courses and there's so much complication about how to put it into an elevation sling. I'll show you an easy way. So what we can do is, this is the triangular bandage. Mm -hmm. So we open it up, like so. So you can see triangular bandage. And then right at the very top, hold it in half, like so. And then all I'm going to do is just raise your arm up. So we go around one side, I put the two ends through the hole, like so. Okay. And then I just tie it up. Hey, and that's simple. the arm supported. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay. Uh, I think I just want to quickly, quickly ask a couple of questions here that yeah, we've yeah. got. Um, 
while you do that. Yeah. Uh, nosebleeds. Um, how, how are you supposed to treat nosebleeds? Because I've always been taught, because I used to get quite a few nosebleeds out of the blue when I was a child, and I was always yeah. taught, shove a key down your back to try and shock you. A cold key had to be something yeah, cold. Yeah, I heard that and one then, like, um, hold, You're supposed to pinch your nose and lean backwards. Is that correct? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I heard about the key last week. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was the first time I actually heard it, a cold key. My grand used to do that to us when we were little, because me yeah. and my sister were terrible. We always have nosebleeds all the time. Yeah, um, what you're supposed to do is actually... Um, get your casualty, get them to uh, actually catch it. But what we are trying to do, if they're wearing glasses and take off their glasses, is pinch the top of the nose, mm -hmm. work down to the fleshy part, and then squeeze there and get them to lean forward. Okay. And they're actually squeezing, because everything we've got a time frame, like 30 chest compressors, two rescue breaths, yeah. and they're squeezing for 10, set, uh, 10 minutes. Okay. After 10 minutes, release. If it's still bleeding, a further 10 minutes. If it's still bleeding, a further 10 minutes. So it's three times 10. Okay. If it's still bleeding after that, it's 999 straight away. Right, OK. Good to know. All yeah. right, and just, we've just got another question here from someone. Um, oh, you mentioned briefly how to treat a heart attack. With yeah. The, yeah. Was there anything else that you need to tell us about that? Um, with heart attacks, um, you're not sure whether it's angina or a heart attack. We mm. treat exactly the same. Now, with angina, um, it, the pain generally lasts no longer than three to eight minutes. But with a heart attack, generally longs la uh, long lasts longer than half an hour. So okay. if you know somebody that's constantly getting heartburn because people mistake angina for heartburn, mm. maybe get them checked out by the doctor. OK, then. And just one final thing before we go yeah. um, about fainting. What do you do if someone faints? Um, I think the old myth was um, sit them down and put their head between the legs. Yeah. The problem with that is all the blood goes to the feet. <laughs> Um, so it's not actually helping. Um, so what I would do is I would lay you onto the floor. Mm -hmm. I'd raise your legs because I mm -hmm. want the blood to go back into the vital organs. So he um, head and heart. OK, brilliant. That's and it. we've run out of time, I'm afraid, guys. Mark, thank you so, so much. It's been so yeah. educational. And like we said, this was just a taster, guys. So, you know, you really should go and do um, a first aid course because there is something that everyone should, should do. Yes, uh, and we run all the courses. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, guys, we have reached the end of today's programme, but if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can do so via the website, chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at Chrissy B Show or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, goodbye for now. Goodbye. It was a great experience. It was fantastic to be able to talk about my work and work with Mark. Uh, and Chrissy is a fantastic host and made us feel fantastically and at ease all the time. So it was great. I just wanted to say thank you to Chrissy B. I was really nervous before I came on and she really did relax us. I really enjoyed my time on the Chrissy B show. All right, guys, so, um, oopsie. Speaking all about the basic first aid that you should, uh, like him, everyone should know. First aid that everyone, oh, everybody, everybody. So, so Mark, um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. What was I gonna say? Something important. I know you don't know what I was going to say, but I'm just no. trying to think of what it was. Uh. Hand in there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a paper bag outdoors? Uh, no, it's just you. I was so shocked. And out it comes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that was.